All right, everybody, this is a video. It's, it's actually the second video I've done um, on the pre-whitening algorithm in the Nearest Toolbox. Um, the first video just really talks about the input and the output. It doesn't really talk about what's happening on the inside. So this is meant to kind of describe what's happening on the inside. And I'm going to hopefully in the near future post another video on the actual dynamics with some data thrown in. So this is meant to give you a little bit more insight on it and hopefully unblack box uh, this algorithm. Uh, so just just so you know, it's it's meant it's built out of the GLM module, and it's uh, one of the processes of fitting the data or fitting the model to the data, which is the autoregressive iterative reweighted least squares, which is also known as ARIRLS. So the AR stands for autoregressive. This just means the algorithm is checking for autocorrelation on a number of lag points. When I say lag points, I mean if you're at time point 10, one lag point would be time point 9, two lag points would be time point 8, three lag points would be time point 7. So what we're trying to figure out is, is time point 9 related to time point 10? Is time point 8 related to time point 10? And if so, how much? And, and try to actually calculate this. The, the reason for this is because we have a model and we have some data that's, that the model is going to be fit to. And then we're going to do all these statistics and everything on that. And all this whole process is assuming that any noise that is on the data compared to the model um, would be white. When I say that, it means it would be random and unrelated noise. But the problem is it's not unrelated noise. It is a time series. Time series mean that it, data is coming in at certain points in time, and the time point before that affected the next time point. So what we're going to do is try to take that relationship out of the noise. AR, again, autoregressive, uh, comes in these kind of standard descriptions, AR0, AR1, ARN, etc. When you have AR0, this is claiming that there are no time points that contribute to the ending result, only the error itself. That's ideal. AR1 means that you have two time points, or sorry, excuse me, one time point that claims that uh, that contributes to your current, current time point. And ARN is basically meant to give you some unending method. So all time points are, are up to 10 or up to 50 or something like that. Uh, basically, it's telling you how many steps back are you going to take here. The iterative uh, section just means that we're going to repeat this process until some endpoint is met. That could just be a, a number of iterations. We're going to do it 10 times, we're going to do it 50 times, 100 times, whatever it is. Or you can actually set, select like a threshold value. And the threshold value would say, we're going to do this process until uh, when we alter the data slightly, we alter this, this uh, aspect slightly, there's really no change. No, the change is, is, is so minute we don't care anymore. So ideally that's, that's the choice you make, not just some set, we're gonna do it 10 times, because depending on what sort of data you're looking at, it may differ. So you wanna kinda have some threshold value. Reweighted means that um, we're going to reweight or, or readjust the data as we go through these iterations. Uh, weighted least squares uh, is a way to allow for what's called, uh, it's actually heteros heteroscedasticity, which basically means your variance is not uniform across your data set. It changes in time or, or something like that. It's a lot over here and not so much over here. And you can weight the data uh, to associate for that. So let's say at the start of a data set, uh, the, the variation is very small, but as you go on in time, the variation starts to build, which is very realistic because, you know, as time goes, each time point could be slightly off and slightly off and slightly off and so it could grow. So the idea is over time, the uh, a big change at the beginning would be more drastic and should be more drastic than a big change at the end because the big change at the end is slightly expected, but a big change at the beginning is not. So you would, re you would weight those appropriately. The beginning section would be weighted more, they'd be more important. The end section would be less important because we have you know, less uh, knowledge of that or whatever it might be. The reweighting process allows you to readjust this as you fine tune things. Uh, during this process, during the ARIRLS function, uh, you're actually going to be adding a, what's called a pre-whitening filter. And the pre-whitening filter is aimed to basically pre-whiten your data. It's meant to take this colored noise, which has some frequency or some shift or something in it, and adjust it to become random. And the way that's done is you're going to apply beta values to that. And the beta values are, and it's actually beta values to time points. So, so you know, so if you have you know beta value at time point nine, beta value at time point eight, beta value at time point seven, they have different effects. 
initially, these betas are just selected randomly. You just put in some value, and I think they're actually hard-coded in the toolbox. When you apply the, the beta values, you calculate the residuals from your data to the model, and then you use stepwise regression, trying to figure out which of the time points has the most impact, or what is, what is the impact of each time point. Instead of using ordinarily squares, what you're going to do is maximum log likelihood, which I'll talk about on the next, next step. It's, it's, you can think of it as ordinarily squares. It has the same goal, essentially. And that output value will be put into what's called a Bayesian information criterion. And that is just, you can think of it as a threshold. You're going to take this fit, and you're going to see how, if, whether or not it exceeds your threshold. And if it exceeds your threshold, you stop. If it doesn't, you keep going. So that's going to be our process. When the output of this just gives you a list of coefficients, and these coefficients are, are, are based on how many time lags um, are there. So if you have five time lags, you'll have five coefficients, 10 time lags, you'll have 10. And again, that was likely selected based on some threshold value uh, in this iteration uh, section. So you had some value that will do it over and over and over and over until some threshold's met. Well, it will keep going back time points until some threshold's met. All right, so least squares versus max, maximum likelihood. They both do, you know, the idea is to fit a model. Um, but the problem with ordinary least squares is it has some assumptions built into it, such as normality. Your data fits a normal uh, distribution. And it also has a lack uh, that there's no autocorrelation in the data. And inherently, that's wrong in, our, in what we're doing. So that's probably not what you want to do. Uh, MML, MLL, maximum log likelihood, just allows you to basically... Um, gives you some more wiggle room on these assumptions. And again, what we're going to do is take the output of the MLL, put it into the BIC, Bayesian Information Criterion, and tweak the model over and over until this threshold's met so that we don't overfit it. When you run this, uh, this process, so now you have pre-whitened data. You've done this filter, you've calculated these betas, it's, it's been adapted to the model and everything's wonderful and good. And now we're going to calculate, I think I wrote these squares, I actually think that should be MLL, but don't worry about that, the process, the idea is there. And this is going to be done until the values of our betas are so small that they're just non-existent. So basically these time points going back are just inherently unimportant. Uh, in the data that I ran, it was 1.49 to the negative eighth. So it was an extraordinarily small number. Um, it may be different from your data. I actually haven't run too many sets of data through here, so you know if it is different, I will imagine it's at least very small. All right, so this was what I'm going to call part one. Uh, part two is going to come a bit later. I am trying to actually get some um, uh, fake data. I'm going to build some fake data where we basically have our model and how it should look and then throw on different types of noise. We have white noise, we have colored noise, we have things like that. And what we're going to try to do is run these uh, different sets of data through um, these different uh, processes, either OLS or this ARIRLS with this wonderful pre-whitening aspect. I'm also going to aim to stop intermittently to print out the data so you can see actually what's happening. Uh, so please stay tuned for part two. I hope this part one was helpful. And there is a kind of part zero uh, that I've done in the past just to kind of highlight what it is that pre-whitening is aiming at doing. So it doesn't lend too much insight into the actual process, but it shows you kind of a beginning and an end and, and what the idea is. Anyway, I hope that was helpful.